All right, delighted to say that Dermot Ling is with us in studio. How are you, Dermot? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Thanks you were in so Croke Park this morning uh, because the GEA is a sustainable development goal champion. I must admit, I didn't know this. I didn't know that there was any connection or commitment from the GEA when it yeah. came to sustainability. So what was happening this morning in Croke Park? Um, I suppose as part of the Climate Action Plan or Climate Action Charter, there are goals that need to be met. And uh, I think it's across 12 different, there's 12 different champions maybe in Irish society who take responsibility for certain aspects of that. There are four primary uh, focuses, I suppose, for the GEA um, uh, they are good health and well-being. It's, but they're things that fit very naturally mm. to, to, to the idea of, uh, of the GA. I mean, any sporting organisation in some respects, but the GA ho- ho- holds these anyway. Um, so good health and well-being, quality education, life on land, so that's into like deforestation, degradation, biodiversity loss, things like that, uh, and partnerships. Um, and that is where, uh, as a kind of a, a trial... Um, today, like uh, as part of the the ultimate aim, I suppose, is to have a toolkit, a sustainability toolkit for GA clubs across the country. Right. That's run in conjunction with the likes of local government organisations <coughs> who are um, who are leading the way on sustainable development goals and models that we can achieve. What is set out in the charter to achieve? Now, I suppose I break a little bit with the party line there. Um, because I think that there are things to achieve that were being that are laid down in Brussels or in central places that I think when they come to Rosslair or to Aunascall or to Barcelona, the, the 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 shape of the ground is different, and it's local people who know their area and they know the undulations of their area and they know the flow of their area, and they're the ones then who. I suppose take what is best practice or what is suggested as best practice and then apply it to an area they mm. know using practices that have always been um, or that maybe once before a more intensive version of, of agriculture came in or something like that or, or of, of forestation came in before we'll say focus on the likes of spruce plantations the, the more the older knowledge of how to keep uh, nature in balance a little bit more it, that, it, that'd be that's a that's a local job, I think, and I think GA clubs and the people in GA clubs uh, can, uh, in, in any sport club, or in, like I mean, any, any of us can do it. But the the remit for the GA, I think, is to, to try and uh, get communities uh, to engage and extend, as I understand it, to extend the notion of community out from people uh, to um, enfranchise trees and rivers the land. and the sea and the land and what it does and soil and uh, soil erosion and deforestation and all of these things. It, it's That's a localised version of uh, climate action really. But it, it is, yeah. Um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm very slow on like with climate action and uh, global warming and all of these climate change. They're a little bit uh, alienating or polarising at the moment, and I think it's it's almost like I have to deal with that again. I'm kind of going to shut off and, and, and go to something else, um, because it's it it seems to be this root and source of, of everything. And I, 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 mm. I, there's a little bit of a jadedness with it because, like, hang on there, like there's other aspects of my life that also kind of need attention, and I yeah. can't just be dealing with that all the time. It's pretty important, all the same. It, oh, I mean, unquestionably, it's, mm. it's 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 essential, but it's the overall balance is is what's essential, and I think. Like we have to just focus on our little area, and there's other people have to focus on on theirs in, in some respects too. And then it's how we join that up. So in the GA, for example, one of the things I've become, I suppose, very interested in uh, with in terms of training and going down the kind of high performance model of KPIs and benching and output, power, protein, carbohydrates, all of this stuff is there. Are, there are possibilities in like I, I feel I hear it on the ground now from club chairman and managers and stuff, and they're saying like, "Look, at this is all going quite well, but there's something missing, or there's something like the, the dynamic or the vibe or whatever." It's like there's just they're, they're looking for something, and I know Dublin last year used um, they were very much interested in connection, uh, connection to each other, connection to legacy, Dublin football legacy, and connection to city. Uh, and they weren't sports psychologists running this stuff. This wasn't like, this is how you do it. It was like, sure. how do we create the conditions in which it happens? And did you hear any specific cases of how they managed to achieve that? 
I mean, at a community level, I suppose, Michael Dara, Kevin Mack, uh, I think there's kind of an endless list of them. Yeah, some Paul Mannion in particular I, is very interested. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's it's just been, it's been fostered in them by creating the conditions for them to to, to, uh, to inquire about it. And definitely it always takes one or two trailblazers to say this is this is possible for us uh, and it's not that we go and we stand in front of the camera uh, for a photo shoot it's that we actually get out and, and do it and create it and, and that's been hugely I think nourishing and rewarding for them at least when, I, when you talk to some of, the, some of them that that's the, that's the kind of essential feeling you get so extending that out um, I suppose I'd, I've always talked about probably Tommy Welch as, as, as to me the kind of the archetypal hurler in this respect who kind of said because I spoke to him about it on, on a few occasions and had a good laugh about it, where he didn't really respect or give much time um, to the gym and like this kind of extra training or swimming or any of these things. It was like what I got from him was that he he was exceptionally connected to Tullerone, to his place and his people and his family and his area, and he kind of worked from that place. And so when he cleared the ball downfield, Tommy, I felt, was kind of still attached to the ball because he just... Every bit of him hit it, like, you know, he was delighted to have it and delighted to play with it, and he worked from that place. And if I was in the gym benching 120 and hitting my max squats and doing all that stuff, and I thought that that was the thing that was going to get the ball off Tommy Welch and a dropping ball, I mean, Earl Italian didn't do it, and he was three times the size of Tommy, like, you know, and I suppose he, he did at times. But, it, you know, in, in the battles sometimes, I think if we focus, and this is where it gets interesting with the parallels with the climate change debate is that if we focus on measuring if it's going to be reduced to measurement carbon footprint and carbon credits and the amount of carbon we're burning and just focus on that and if we're going to focus in GA on training to train our muscles to hit their maximum output um, through exceptional nutrition which is reducing food and animals uh, down to carbohydrates and protein and things like that uh, if we're going to reduce it to that numbers game <clears throat> I think what we will find is um, we're missing out on a source of energy that is greater than anything that you can put onto your body in the gym and that source of energy comes from knowing your your place being out in your place not going from like work to the car to train and on the field to the gym to the car, to home, to work, like not the, 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 the routine that we sometimes mm. get caught in, but being out in our places, it's going back out into the nature, like going back out into our wilder places, going back out into our communities and meeting those, uh, those parts that we may, maybe just tend to stay a little bit away from because we've got the comfort of, uh, of a certain lifestyle that doesn't really invite us out so much into those places. Uh, and then I think if we don't know our place, you're much less likely to really fight for your place. And I think that fight, in, in the most positive sense of it, I think there's huge potential for, 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 for winning, for, for winning from that place. I'm not talking about, you know, competing in it for it to sure. be all this softness. Like, I'm talking about really embodying the energy of your place and playing from that as opposed to a more systematic, measured approach, mm. which still has, in this... In this ideal world that I'm talking about still absolutely has a value. It's it's very interesting, Dermot, because I guess when you're making those uh, initial points at the start that perhaps the whole idea of climate change, global warming can be a sort of overwhelming idea and mm. perhaps it just grinds you down over time, which is a fair enough point, but I think it's especially fair because you're offering a way that as individuals there is an alternative to that there is the focusing on your place your connection with the land with the nature that exists around you and you do wonder if bit by bit if that was the attitude around GEA clubs around Ireland that would collectively be a very positive action by the GEA as a whole well, I think that's that's just our responsibility in a way because <clears throat> the the organisation um and the, the community nature of, of, of GA in this case uh, carries with it a certain identity. And sometimes that can be quite a negative thing. Sometimes that strays into a little bit of darkness uh, where it's not maybe the, the, the fertile ground that it could be for, for, for our development as people. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't lend to that. Uh, as you, 
we won't go into maybe what some of those things are, but sure. uh, sometimes it can, it can be that. But Parochialism. Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose ultimately um, there is a possibility to run what is kind of theoretical in terms of climate change because there is this overwhelming language of, and, and that leads to kind of inaction or exhaustion or whatever it is, and particularly when it's phrased in a kind of a, the war on carbon like and, and these kind of things. It's like, well... What do I represent? Where do I represent? If I go out training and I run in a Sitka spruce plantation, I see that that doesn't support life. Yeah. That doesn't hold water. That doesn't engage. That's a cash crop, and that's what that is. And there's an essential aspect to that, and that's fine. But it doesn't support life. You just go out into it and you see that. You know, the soil is acidified. You can't do anything with it. And after 16 years, whatever it is, it's all cut down and it looks like a war zone. Mm. You go out into, you go run in a natural forested area of native woodland trees, you see that place is teeming with life, teeming with sounds, teeming with smells, like teeming with, with, its, with its own self. And then it comes down the road a couple of years later, maybe, where somebody says, well, there's this little crop of land over here. There's great money in Sitka Spruce. I think we should put 20 hectares of Sitka, Sitka Spruce in there and in 16 years' time, you know, we'll be, we'll, we'll be, we'll be wealthy men. Mm. And you kind of, and someone else says, well, hang on there now, like, we ran, we, we were out running in that and I know what that does to the land and I know that needs 10 years to regenerate afterwards and maybe we'll regenerate afterwards if you do the right things. Maybe we should go with our, our own native uh, version of things because it seems to support the wildlife more, you know. So only by going out into the places, only by going to the rivers or only going to the sea for the coastal communities, only going to the places do we get to see what the possibilities are in our places. Absolutely. You know? Like the, that brings me to the final point and it's something I've actually wanted to ask you about for a while. Like Blind Boy, who everybody, I'm sure plenty of you listen to his um, mm -hmm. podcast, during, I think it was during the Rugby World Cup because I think it was hooked off perhaps even the typhoons that were occurring over in Japan. He tweeted saying, can some sports personalities please, please start speaking up on climate action? Mm. The, and in inverted commas, absolute lads uh, desperately need someone who they will listen to <coughs> and there's a big gulf at the moment. He says, hurlers, rugby players, soccer players, whatever, feel free to give me a shout if you need directions for expert info. Climate action is as important as speaking out on mental health. It's an emergency level crisis that really needs everyone's support. And in the final part, uh, the final tweet, to clarify what an absolute lad is, they are the ones who will sing ole, ole, ole when a pint glass breaks in a pub. I have friends like this. Five years ago, they'd laugh at me for saying I have anxiety. Now they understand why it's okay to say it. And that's because they listen to sports people. Uh, mm. it's, it's an interesting thread. It's an interesting idea that perhaps th there should be more people speaking out about this in positions of power. I think that's definitely the case. Does that maintain itself to sport though um, I think that it does I suppose you're, you're after kind of hitting me with a few things there and, and uh, a, there is a lot in that <coughs> there's, accept, there's yeah. a lot in it so I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what, you're, what, the, what the question is coming off but there's just the language of it um, there's one aspect of it it's about the crisis what, that, 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 that phrase that you use yeah an emergency uh, level crisis emergency level crisis now an emergency level crisis when somebody says to me if my partner comes in to me now in the evening time and she says to me we have an emergency level crisis in the sitting room I know that my son mm. is in serious trouble and that creates stress in mm. me that moment until I find out what's happened you know it creates a stress in me and I think the response to this is not a stressful response that's what we're being invited into by that language I think and it's a very common language particularly by the kind of catastrophic we won't have anything in we'll be no more soil in 40 years or whatever and those things may be true but the inducement the inducement of stress to meet this war on carbon is a, a thing that I think we need to be very very careful of because as we're laying out here there are things to be done and they can be done. And they're only native to us, and they're only things that we know. Now, unfortunately, it probably will take, and the absolute lad thing that I, I, I'd have a, a little bit of an issue with it, but taking it as it is, your average person, and very much like, like I'm sitting here drinking a coffee, and coffee will, uh, it intensifies my experience, and... Uh, it, and it creates a little bit of stress in my in my body if I take too much of it. And sometimes I take too much of it because I want this feeling of stress in my body to feel an aliveness or something, mm. I don't know. And I have to deal with that. Now, that's an addiction. And we have addictions. And to be able to deal with your addictions is a 
phenomenal, phenomenal thing uh, and a, a good place to get to, to be able to say, I want it, but I'm not going to have it. And we've all battled with these things in different ways, the sugar, coffee, drink, fags, whatever it is. Some of our addictions here are addictions to a way of life and the fear way it would have when it comes to, when I hear about sustainability and sustainability is the word of the hour, when I hear about sustainability, all I hear at the moment is what can we do to sustain our way of living as we know it? That's really what we're talking about with sustainability and that's not what sustainability is. The essence of it has to be about a, a fundamental shift in how we see the world around us. Are we just... Are we the humans and that's the nature over there or <clears throat> is community, not community of people, a community of everything? Can we enfranchise nature? Can we say that the sentience of a river and of a tree and of an animal and of a flower has the same relevance as, as we do? Can we get to that point or can we start looking like that? And I yeah. think if we started looking like that a little bit more, just a little bit of a shift from the use and benefit mindset to commonage consciousness, like common, it's to, to, to sh what we share in common, that that has a value. And I think then... And GA people are perfectly placed to be able to experience that. I think sports people are, are and I think the GA, like, I feel it's almost like, it's, you know, limiting to say it's just GA people. But in sure. this case, I suppose, I feel that they're definitely ideally placed. Now, if, I think, if they follow what is said in a foreign place about these are the things you should do, I... I I'd have serious questions because I think that we intrinsically and innately know the solutions to these problems on the ground in our own areas and that's the great possibility and we get to play while we're doing it and we get to enjoy doing mm. it and it's not the, the crisis inducing fear Well, well that I will that say about. It is a, it's a very positive message yeah. and a, a positive way you're, you're approaching this from uh, it's, uh, I should mention again that, that you were in Dublin today as part of the, the GA and the Sustainable Development they are uh, a Sustainable Development Goal mm. Champion um, and The it's clubs are coming to the GA yeah. looking for guidance like the, the clubs are coming looking for guidance and leadership on it so I think I'd encourage GA clubs, I'm not sure at this point are like just open up the channels of engagement anyway of how GA clubs would like to get involved. Can we have polytunnels in GA clubs? We've had a spot in midfield of every GA club in the country at some stage, now we might literally have one. Like can we can we what can we do in our GA club to make it an area where we can just connect not just to ourselves, mm. but, but but to the area around us a bit more? And I think these problems will actually begin to work themselves out a lot more than the yeah, the carbon kind of Carbon is the enemy, kind of an idea. I'm not sure. Yeah. Listen, Dermot Ling, thanks a million. Great catching up.